from PRX. Lay, wait, friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Yodish beings, and, uh, you know, any, uh, you know, your uh, Osos or uh, uh, fans of Raven Simone everywhere. It's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that put a lot in the beginning of the show because uh, because of what, I wanted to say Yodish beings, and then I thought of other important things uh, that you may you say, well, actually, I'm all of those. Well, I'm not a Yodish. Scoots, what's a Yodish being? And I'd say, come on now. Uh, it's a being that's a bit like Yoda. It's Yodish. Uh, also, like, uh, yeah. I guess it could be many other things. Oh, you know what, though? It's time. I'm going off topic already. It's time for sleep with me. Welcome. The podcast that puts you to sleep. Hey, before we get to the story here, uh, or before we get to the intro or whatever, whatever's next, uh, remember, sleep with me is built uh, to create a place, a safe place for you to rest where you could, you know, relax and and get comfortable. And that comes from my empathy and compassion because I've been there in the deep, dark night and I want something good for you because you deserve a good night's sleep. And that also comes with a response. I come with, it comes with a responsibility to you. And that means two things. making sure there's resources in the show notes if you're having a tough time right now and saying, take that step uh, to, to, to use those resources if you need them. And the second thing is to say that the lives of our listeners uh, clearly matter. If good sleep matters, then the lives of our listeners matter. And that means that black lives matter. And I'm glad listeners keep pointing that out to me that, yeah, this show's about you and that means something, right? So there's going to be links to organizations in the show notes if you want to be a part of change because you matter, okay? And it's important to me uh, to, to be in that place of uh, compassion and empathy so I can be here for you and make this show. And I'm glad you're here. Thank you so much for listening. And here's a couple of ways I'm able to bring this show twice a week. All right, everybody. It's uh, time for me to talk about that bed that I'm in every single night. Oh, boy. Do, am I, you know, with the winter, I say, I'm going to be comfortable these long winter nights with my Helix. My brother just got a Helix. Him and his wife have been telling me all about it. Uh, you know, listener after listener, friend, family member, everybody loves their Helix bed because they've got a bed for everybody. So just think about the bed you're in right now. D- does it really, is it really comfortable? How is it, a, is it a bed you've had in your family for a while? You say, well, I don't even know where we got this bed because it's time for you to upgrade. You deserve it. Helix makes personalized mattresses right here in America and they're shipped straight to your door with free no contact delivery, free returns, and a hundred night sleep trial. To choose a mattress helix made a quiz that just takes two minutes to complete matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you so if you like a mattress that's really soft or firm or if you sleep on your side or your back or your stomach or you sleep really hot with helix there's a specific mattress for each and everybody's unique taste and that's for me i sleep on my side i sleep on my stomach i guess partially i sleep i don't really sleep on my back too much but i sleep hot and i want something that's comfortable so i took the quiz that's how i ended up with the Helix Dusk, and it is absolutely mind-blowing. I got the Dusk Lux. It's the best mattress I've ever owned. I love Helix, but you don't have to just take my word for it. Helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 by GQ Wired Magazine and Apartment Therapy. Just go to helixsleep.com sleep and take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you with a customized mattress that'll give you the best sleep of your life. Right, Mystery Bard? Just go to helixsleep.com Thanks, Mr. Bard. They have a 10-year warranty, and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They even pick it up if you don't love it, but you will. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash sleep. That's helix, H-E-L-I-X, sleep.com slash sleep for $200 off. Thanks, everybody. All right. 
right, everybody, it's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone, the one part of the podcast I need you to hear. It's where I pop my peas, if you please, because I'm so happy with the listeners that supported the sponsors. Let me know about it. Let the sponsors know the partnership is appreciated. And that's where I want to thank Rebecca and Franklin and Peg and Dave uh, for supporting Helix. They all got their Helixes or Helixes and mattresses, indeed. And they let me know about it. They let Helix know about it. I really appreciate that. And I want to thank Fairy Nursery, who signed up for a year at KiwiCo. And like KiwiCo, they really appreciated our, their former sponsorship of the show. So I just want to thank you. If you support a sponsor, really, this is how people base their sponsorships on podcasts. Is It's not that their ads are heard. It's that people, like, you know, they want to hear from the people actually. You know what I mean? They want to stir action. Uh, so if you support a sponsor, let them know about it. Let me know about it. And I can try to thank you here on the Sleepy Supporter Zone, like Rebecca, Franklin, Peg, Dave, and Fairy Nursery. Uh, the second part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone and the third part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone are things I support and support for you. So if you're having a tough time right now, there's links to organizations that can help in the show notes. If you're looking for a longer-term relationship with a therapist, check out our sponsor, BetterHelp. And the emotional support of our community, particularly right now for the black members of our community, is very important. Black mental health is important because black lives matter. And I have links to organizations that you can either support or you can turn to for support. And one of those is BEAM. That's B-E-A-M. And that's the Black Emotional and Mental Health Collective, which is a group of therapists, lawyers, religious leaders, teachers, psychologists, activists, and advocates working together for emotional and mental health and healing in the black community. And if you want to access their resources or support them, there'll be links to BEAM in the show notes uh, so you, you can you know let your community know you're here to support them uh, that's the end of the sleepy supporter zone oh mystery bard a lot of people help out on this show including you who are they this posty poster song sounds like an earful wrote the theme song edits episodes carl w the legend also edits episodes kenny scotty jennifer and ashley and runner, 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 runner. eric and the team that is down or on the website You see the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators You can support your scooter on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud Thanks, Mr. Bard, and you can always, uh, if you're commissioning a holiday, if you're looking to commission a holiday song, use the Mystery Bard, uh, song.jonathanman.net. Uh, that's it. Make sure if you're listening to this podcast and the podcast app, you know, you could share right out of the podcast app on Twitter or Instagram or whatever and let people know you're listening to the show. What do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning? Mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep. Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed to turn out the lights and press play. I'm going to do the rest. And what I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever is keeping you awake, whether it's thoughts, you know, things on your mind from the past, the present, the future, all those things. Or, you know, say, well, there's a past thought. Oh, there's a present thought about the past. There's a future thought about the past because of the past of the future. There's a thought about days of future past. I wonder what streaming service that's on. You know, so it could be thoughts, could be feelings, uh, you know, any emotions coming up for you, remaining from the day, anticipatory emotions. Could be sweet emotions, uh, though they usually, sometimes those keep you up, though. Like, uh, so it could be emotions, it could be physical sensations, it could be ch changes in routine or schedule or someone else's routine. It could be baffling. Whatever it is that's keeping you awake, 
I'd like to take your mind off that. What I'm going to do, or what I propose to do, is I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones. Initially, my lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones are neither lulling or soothing for some people, but eventually, they, they ideally, they will be. They're the only tones I got uh, that are suitable for bedtime. My non-lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones are more uh, not. This, this, so this is my bedtime voice. Uh, so I'm he- I'm going to send my voice across the deep dark night. I'm use those to lo- like while I use my lulling, soothing tones. There's a question though. Are like this is one of those tree in the woods, chicken or egg things, or fro- frog or the frog or the egg. Is my voice carry my my creaky dulcet tones? Uh, well, I guess they're are they carried on sound waves or are they they are sound waves uh, and they're carried on sound waves. Uh, that's something to think about. I never thought because they said, well, what's carrying my creaky dulcet tones across the deep dark night? And the old physics brain said they, they they're they're carrying themselves. I, I guess uh, so. Maybe not. I don't know. But uh, that's a little bit too, it's not very deep because you say, well, it's not a deep thought. It's just a thought I don't have the knowledge to comprehend. And I don't, this is a good thing about this podcast. If you're new, there's nothing to comprehend here. That's one of the first things I want to let you know. This is a podcast you don't really need to listen to. You don't really comprehend it so much as it's there. And you say, huh, what, uh, what is this dude talking? Was he just talking about, what was he talking about earlier? Did he say Yodish beings? Does he say he has cr- 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 craggy, uh, craggy dentist tones or something? Because he does sound like a craggy, what I would imagine a craggy mountain would sound like. And, you know, or a dentist in a craggy mountain. Well, no, it's a little bit more soothing than that, uh, but he is a little craggy, the, cra- the craggy, crabby dentist, the craggy, craggy dentist. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, I don't want to talk about that anymore, so let's just move on. So, oh, this is a podcast you don't really listen to. So if you're trying to wait for it to start or you're going to say, when is he going to make sense? When am I going to comprehend what he's talking about? This podcast is best consumed passively. And just like if you're looking at something craggy, if, unless you're like some sort of adventurer or like one of those climbers, you say, well, that's pretty like, uh, I mean, I guess I'm craggy aspirational. I would love uh, not to do any of the stuff that involves all the work, but just to, like if I had power of levitation, I'd love to check out some craggy mountains up close and rub my hand. Oh boy, craggy mountain. Would I want to lo- rub my hand around? Oh boy. Just to see your crag, I'd love to feel your crags if you don't mind me, you know, if you don't mind me uh, appreciating your natural beauty, but you're so high up that normally I have to, you know, it's from the road. That's where I consume most of my crags uh, is from the road. Well, they say, would you see that over there? It's a craggy mountain. There's not a lot of, I mean, I'm sure because craggy mountains, as opposed to like you'd say, Scoots, can you tell me, can you give me an example of a famous craggy mountain? And I'd say, unfortunately, no, because finally, I guess today is the first time Crags got to get, there's probably one called Crags National Park. I think, I don't know, Pinnacles, uh, is that, there's a lot of ones with fancy names. Like you'd say, well, what about Yosemite? I'd say, no, Yosemite's a little smooth to be called a crag. I mean, El Capitan, if it was smaller, there's probably craggy spots in Yosemite National Park, but those aren't the ones getting all the attention. If El Capitan wasn't so massive and majestic and reflect, you know, it had all the light playing at it, you'd say, you'd see, like, if it was like little, I don't know, is there, uh, like, uh, is there one called Mon Capitan, uh, like that smaller or something? Uh, or I don't know, like a little lieutenant, uh, they say, well, that one's craggy, but that's outside, that's in a different park. So I don't know. I mean, I don't really know a lot of things off the top of my head. I was just thinking of it because I drove by some craggy stuff not that long ago. And I said to myself, I like crags. Also, I like going off topics. Sorry about that. So if you're waiting for this podcast to make sense, there you go. It doesn't really ever make any sense.
it just kind of barely makes sense. You'd say you're, he's kind of almost right, uh, except for Super Crag, you know, Super Crag fans. You'd say, well, how you scooch, you don't know, uh, you know, Smith Rock State Park. I'd say, well, I've heard, I get that one mixed up. Is that a, or you don't know Jones, Jones and Jones, you know, old Troubadour, Troubadour Stone. It say it sounds like you're just making up words and trying to associate them with crags. And I'd say, you're right, I am. You caught me because I'm within you. Well, it's a good try. So it's a podcast you don't really listen to. It's also a podcast that doesn't really put you to sleep. Oh, and now my brain just said, was there anything on Tatooine that you would consider craggy? And I'd say, well, it's kind of tough when you're in a canyon. I guess crags are best viewed at a distance, so I can't say that I saw any crags on Tatooine or that other planet that we were in recently. Uh, but, okay, so, oh, it's a podcast you don't listen, really listen to. It doesn't really put you to sleep either. I'm here to keep you company while you drift off. That's why the episodes are about an hour, to give you plenty of time to fall asleep. And if you can't sleep, I'm going to be here to keep you company. That's one of my promises to you. Uh, is I'm here to keep you company. So podcast doesn't really put you to sleep and it doesn't really ever get started. Also the structure of the show can throw new listeners off. But what what I want to say to my regular listeners, you're, you're important too, regular listeners. Holy moly. I mean, ash, gosh, but gosh, I mean, thanks for letting me know your favorite crags. Uh, isn't crag a nice word? How come... That's not that you don't you don't really know. Does anyone know a crag out there? Old Crag Cromwell. That was uh, one of the the one Cromwell that wasn't famous. Uh, Crag Cromwell. If, believe it or not, mo, oh, absolutely adorable was Crag Cromwell. Misnamed, or you'd say pro, aptly named. Those of us that love crags. And, but no one, because I'm trying to think what we, probably, I got to think of what my, I'll name a plant crag, because that's a good name for a plant. Uh, A turtle, you could call it, a turtle would be good. I'm not trying to uh, belittle you turtles. I'm just trying to think of like what, like uh, resonates, uh, where you say that is definitely a crag, like a snapping turtle. That you say, well, I want you to meet my snapping snapping turtle at a distance, of course. Uh, it's my snapping turtle crag. Wow, I never. That's an aptly named turtle. You say, yeah, when I, I want you to meet my plant. I don't know what kind it is. It's it's got some fuzzy stuff on it, some lumpy leaves. It's this is crag the plant. I don't know what other things, maybe a fish, like one of those fish that looks like, like it would be a crag. I'm sure there's a lot of fish out there. You'd say, no, that's a crag. I, I, I agree with you. Is that a freshwater? Yeah, it is. That's actually a species. Crag is a fish species. Is it anything like a rock lobster? No. Did, did you just hear Fred Schneider's voice when I said that? I did. I did. Uh, but anyway, so, oh, podcasts don't really put you to sleep, doesn't, oh, structure the show. I was sorry, I was saying hi to the new listeners, I got off topic again. So structure the show can throw people off, and it really, it, it really, um, people have strong feelings about it. And I, I just, I think it's just because the show really does defy expectations, not always in a good way. So if you're used to regular structure, or a structure you would expect. This show's different. It starts off with a greeting. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Yodish beings, and such. Then uh, there's a, a business that and and listener or, or like uh, directed stuff. That that's how we keep the show coming out twice a week. Then there's uh so there's the intro. Then there's the business. Then there's no there's the business. Then there's the intro. The intro goes on like about twenty minutes or so, somewhere around fourteen to twenty minutes. And it's just me talking about the podcast. And that's one of the things people think that the business and the intro is the same thing. The intro is business that uh, it ju- just like uh, in. Uh, Rooster's Million, where you say we're in the business of doing business. I'm in the business of talking about stuff, but I never get to the point. So the intro is just to introduce the podcast. 
uh, to new listeners, but then it's also to help uh, regular listeners to fall asleep, to give you some distance from the day. So you say, oh, okay, now I can fall asleep. I, I don't need, need to, uh, like, because it, it, I ease you into bedtime. The whole idea of the intro is you could play it before you get in bed or while you're getting into bed. Some people will fall asleep during it. Some people will find they prefer to skip it, but for most listeners, it's, it's it's helping you drift off or be a part of a structured bedtime. Be a part of, be a part of a structured bedtime routine, where you're unwinding. So that's the intro. Then there's business. Then there's our story. So it'll be a recap of uh, Mandalorian, chapter ten, uh, the passenger. So and then there's the anchors at the end. So that's a structure. And what else do you need to know if you're new? Not every, Oh, this podcast does not work for everybody. You probably already figured that out, though, because you said, I never heard anybody use Craig more times. Uh, what about the person in, uh, they, they were in both one of the Thor movements, Rag, Rag, I can't even say that word without stuttering, Rag, Thor Rag, Ragnarok, uh, uh, there, there's a character that could have been a good call. Like, uh, there's a couple of characters in there. You'd say, well, uh, what's your name? Craig? Well, thank you. I'd love to be Craig. Also, see if you can think of the character. And then you say, wait a second. That reminds me of, uh, of, uh, season one of the Mandalorian. So a little cookie in there for you. Uh, so that's, uh, oh, what was my point about that though? Oh, not everybody likes the show either. So give the podcast a few tries and see how it goes. It does not work for everybody. You could still say, well, okay, this kind of worked for me or kind of didn't. Like, like uh, just see, see how it goes and see if, if you like it or not. So that's the structure of the show. I'm trying to think what else. The reason I make the show is because I've been there in the deep, dark night, tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep. So I want to help, like, if I can, because I know how it feels, and I want to make bedtime something that you feel a little bit more neutral about, where it doesn't feel so craggy, uh, or you don't feel craggy tomorrow. You say, whoa, boy, that is as smooth as I imagine the face of Half Dome is, uh, even though it's not technically probably not smooth at all. Oh, boy, did I slide in bed, and then I did some, uh, you know, whatever, I sculpted some clay. And, or I modeled, nope, I modeled some clay. Oh boy, did it look good on me too. I sat, I got back out of bed and I sashayed with my clay. I, I was the first, you know, I'm the first modeling clay model that's not made of clay. And they say, are you ensconced in clay? That was what they said to me at city. They said, and they said, you're going to have to get, you know, you're going to have to pick a number. And I said, I am. Thank you for using that wonderful word, though. Yes, I, that's what I said when I looked at myself in the mirror. I said, ensconced in clay. Today, I say, I'll be ensconced in clay as I was dressing in clay, which you really don't do. Uh, don't, I don't recommend it. And don't go to any city halls. Or This was a Lego city hall that I built, so it was a little bit different situation. And... Uh, like, uh, the, but they weren't even happy, you know, and it was, I was just play, you know, it was just, it was playtime. Well, unfortunately, it was also at a Lego store. So then I had to deal with the, but I said, uh, I'd like to make a proposal, you know, I'd like to, we don't have an official garment, uh, uh vestments for this town. And I'd like to declare that this is a clay, like, I'd like to, uh, and they said, what's your angle? And I said, uh, it, I put it all on, pull, put all my money in clay. I don't know if you heard me a while ago. I said clay's making a comeback, and so I put it all in clay. Uh, really, all my coins. I wrapped them in clay. I can't find them because I say, and I say I don't even want to try to get all the clay off of it. Uh, not, not, I'm not even thinking about getting the clay. So, uh, how'd you get in Wisconsin clay? Very slowly, you know, like. Uh, one piece of clay at a time. Anyway, I got to get back to the intro. So not everybody likes this podcast. That's, uh, I don't know how I got dressed in clay. I thought I was talking about crags. Oh, cause maybe you're modeling clay, getting, you know, doing a part of your wind down routine. So that's what, what the podcast is here for, to give you some distance between the daytime and the nighttime and to ease you into bed. So see how it goes. Uh, that's one of the reasons I make the show, because I've been there. 
The other reason I make the show is because you deserve a good night's sleep. You deserve a place you could rest and get some time and get some, you know, get some rest and, and get some wind down. And then tomorrow, ideally, you're in a better place. Uh, that, that's, you know, and then you say, well, I'm flourishing now. I've been listening to sleep with me for a while. Those are my favorite emails. Uh, or people that say, I'm flourishing so much, Scoots, I don't even need to listen to you anymore. And I say, that's great. Like, that really is. That gives me purpose because uh, if you're flourishing, the world's going to be a better place for all of us to live in. So that's it. That's why I make your show. Give it a few tries. That's what most listeners say. Uh, it's free. So just see how it goes. And I think that's it. I'm glad you're here. I work very hard. I yearn a nice drive. Uh, and uh, I'm glad, glad to, yeah, I appreciate your time. And I really want to help you fall asleep. Here's a couple of ways I'm able to bring this show free twice a week. Hey, everybody, it's Scoots here, and I'm here to talk about therapy. I work with a licensed professional therapist uh, on a regular basis, and it has been so beneficial in my life. And if you're out there thinking about it, you know, you're, you're dealing with something, you're feeling overwhelmed, maybe it's anxiety, maybe you just want to make some changes in your life, and you want to have someone there to listen and to help you with issues. Uh, a professional therapist is an amazing, for me, life-changing resource. So whatever it is anxiety, grief, depression, relationships, uh, sleep, anything you're dealing with, a licensed professional therapist can help. And with BetterHelp, all you do is simply fill out a questionnaire to help assess your basic needs, and then you get matched with your counselor in under 48 hours. From there, you can easily schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus exchange unlimited messages to communicate with your therapist at your convenience. And everything you share is confidential. If for any reason you're unhappy with your counselor, you can request a new one at any time at no additional charge. So you can find someone you feel good with, which is just another important part of the process. It's just another safe place to, for you to find. Join the 1 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced BetterHelp counselor. BetterHelp is an affordable option for our listeners and get 10% off your first month with the discount code SLEEPWITHME. That's one word, sleep with me. Get started started today at B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com. That's betterhelp dot com slash sleep with me. Talk to a therapist online and get help. Betterhelp dot com slash sleep with me for 10% off your first month. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. I was just trying to think of a fancy word for teeth. Uh, sp but if you saw mine, you'd say those are sparklers. Uh, but really, my favorite part of uh, working with Quip, uh, our amazing sponsor, is when I go to my dentist and she says, wow, you're really flossing. Because not only does Quip make amazing uh, smart toothbrushes, they have amazing options for flossing on a regular basis. I don't know if you've tried floss picks or different kind of flosses. We all know you got to floss every day. It's really that simple, especially if you want that sweet, sweet smile from your dentist. You deserve, like, just like you deserve a good night's sleep, your, your teeth are saying, hey, yo, get up here and floss us. Uh, how about it? But Quip has a brand new reusable floss pick. Uh, you're going to want it. I mean, the pop-up floss dispenser was amazing. This thing's even better. It has a durable handle that's easy to guide, and it restrings with a click. It has a compact mirrored dispensing case for on the go, but it lasts. It has has a single refill pod that replaces over 180 single-use plastic flossers, so it's easier to use. It's great for your teeth, and it's good for the environment. And if you don't use a pick, if you haven't seen it, check out our sponsor page so you can see my videos of my pop-up floss dispenser, too. And, and if you're going to put in an order at Quip, get the electric toothbrush. Uh, it's got those amazing features, the timed sonic vibrations uh, with guided pulses that help you brush better, get, the whole, get your whole mouth clean. They have anti-cavity toothpaste and mint and watermelon. And their new Quip uh, smart electric toothbrush, you connect it to the Quip app, it really reinforces those healthy habits. You can earn amazing rewards like free products and discounts. You can get that streak going. Quip also delivers a brush head floss and toothpaste refills every three months from $5. Shipping is free, so you can save money and skip the store. It just comes to you on a regular basis. Just another thing I love about Quip. But 
but mostly it's that my dentist is proud of me and it's because Quip makes it so easy. So you can bring delight to your everyday brushing and join over 5 million mouths brushing with Quip starting at just $25. Mr. Bart, what's the, uh, what's the promo code? Brush your teeth. That's right. If you go to getquip.com slash sleep right now, you get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash sleep. That's getquip.com slash sleep. Quip, better oral health made simple. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. Scoots here. It's time to talk about uh, chapter 10 of the Mandalorian. Mandaborian here. Starts off with a recap. We see... One season one episode with the the droid that had bug eyes, uh, and actually there's more than one level of callback to that episode uh, where they're on the ship, uh, the prisoner I think it's called, or the escape plan or something. One of the best uh, stand up uh, stand alone episodes of that season. I mean, really episode I really enjoyed watching every time I watched it. Uh, so we have the bug droid in Oso, then we have, uh, like last episode, a total recap of last episode for anybody new. Then we have the Lucasfilm and Star Wars thing. I did want to say that, uh, this episode I watched, I watched both episodes this season with someone that's not a Star Wars watcher and kind of like was doubtful, but they really seemed to enjoy this episode a lot. So I don't know if it was their mood or, you know, they'd seen the other episode. They're still learning. They Like, when you introduce someone new, they love Oso even more, which I didn't think was possible. Maybe just because Oso's more developed and has more sounds this season. I don't know. But we get this episode, we see two sons. So we get the Lucasfilm Star Wars openings. And we see two sons in a desert a plane and a speeder bike kicking up dust. In my notes, I said a speeding speeder bike. I don't know what the speed limit for speeder bikes is. Oso's in the breeze. And we open with some action. A little band, band bandit trap uh, with some ropes, which is big. You know, band, uh, trying to steal from the Mandalorian, not a good idea. Uh, but cre- creative work, we, uh, we, like, uh, they, uh, you know, they do that. Uh, so they cause a little speeding speeder bike, like a uh, stoppy poo, and everything spills out of the ship. Uh, and actually, speeder bike is non functional. We see the uh, Beskar armor in action, which you'd think if you'd saw Beskar armor in action, you'd just say, okay, let's, let's get out of here. But that's not how it works. Uh, so they get a d- drop on them. Oh, so uh, action. Shride, let's see. So there's like a dance off, you know, typical action sequence with the dance off. Mando has to outdance four characters, or maybe five, but one of them gets carries Oso, and Mando says, "That's my child, so don't mess with my child." Uh, we could just strike a bargain, which also brings up, "Don't strike a bargain with Mandalorian." Two episodes in a row, you learn that it is like a, I'm a genie in a bottle, baby. Uh, but I think that song's more about, uh, romance, but this one's like uh, those genie in the bottle stories. Be careful what you make a strike a bargain for. Uh, but they go back and forth and eventually they settle on the jetpack, which I said, what do you buy? I mean, I guess the jetpack's probably worth a ton of money. One, it must have limited fuel. Uh, I don't know how much fuel it has, uh, that, but, uh, in, but so, cause they don't use it. Maybe it just can't carry, uh, a lot of weight other than a human and an Oso. But Mando uses a remote on that, uh, after the, the character he made the deal with takes a jetpack and he flies, flies away. Looks like it attaches to Mando's back by magnet. Uh, so that character runs off with the jetpack, then gets jetpacked. Uh, jetpacked right into the sand, remote control, n- not very, not very uh, merciful, I guess. So jetpack returns, uh, how much, uh, uh, fuel I put. Also, we, there's a close up of the Mandalorian before they switch, switch to the chapter marker. He still has green slime on his face. 
So he hasn't had a chance to clean his helmet. Then we get some Mando walking through the desert scenes like in a Western. Even a crossfade uh, with good music, of course. Uh, mirages. Then he sees the town. He gets back at dusk, uh, back to, um, I forgot the name of the town, of course. Uh, oh, no, Olga's Cantina. I think that's where he shows up, though. Uh, know the name of that. Corellia? No, that's not it. And he finds our sa- his favorite Sedaris uh, playing poke or some sort of card game. I don't know if it's the same game as in from the solo movie. Uh, Sedaris is playing against uh, some sort of uh, thorax-based being, TBB. She says, you, would you do, you got some Mandalorian stuff, huh? Where is the Mandalorian? He goes, it was a Mandalorian, but I bought his armor. Would that set you back? Kray Dragon. Uh, he was my last lead, though. Dr. Mandible, according to the, uh, Dr. Mandible. Uh, can you cover Dr. Dr. Mandible knows where some Mandos are. Can you cover his costs? It's a 500, a high stakes game. He's on a hot streak anyway. And, uh, so Mando gets it back, like his, his, his karma right back, I guess. So she, Cause she says, uh, idiots array, pay up thorax. Maybe that's like four jokers or something. I don't know. And he goes, okay, we'll contact with the rendezvous at the hang, rendezvous with the contact at the hangar. Uh, Sedaris is brusque, I put, uh, she also walks with total, total, like, cool attitude. She goes, you get any dragon meat? Better be good. Stop your crying. Uh, stop your moping, she says. They don't overcook the meat either, Treadwell. Medium rare, rare. They cook in the dragon meat by a jet, jet, jet thing. She goes, okay, the covert's close. One system over. He goes, Navarro? She goes, I don't know. But the contact will take you. He goes, how much? Free, except for my finder's fee. And uh, he goes, well, what's not the good news? She goes, uh, one small skank in the scud pipe. Uh, contact wants passage to the system. Do you vouch for them? Oh, totally, to the max. Okay. Also, you can't use hyperspace and our hyperdrive. Uh, he goes, no way, sub, sublight. Uh, that's, he goes, I it can't, that's not a good idea. She goes, mitigating circumstances. He goes, what do you mean? Then we see like a slee sack. What are they called? Slee sacks? Uh, like a frog, frog person. And uh, they say, oh, so she's carrying a backpack uh, kind of uh, full of uh, frog eggs. And she's going to her spawn. She needs them fertilized by Equinox. So can't, the eggs can't go in hyperspace. Her husband's on the estuary moon of Trask, uh, Trask or something. Sedaris speaks frog or froggish or froggian. And he goes, yeah, does, is that where the Mandalorians are? My husband knows where the Mandalorians are. She's seen, he's seen them. Oso is really staring at the egg, the frog eggs, which are in a, a clear backpack, uh, I assume heated. The Mando says to Sedaris, do you even know the husband? I just met her. What are you talking about? And then she eats some uh, dragon meat, thin sliced. Cray dragon meat is a, it looks like you cook it a bit like you would for meat for a uh, euro or gyro, depending on where, where you uh, name stuff. Let's see, frog person, also has eyes for spawn, uh, estuary moon, you, you, she's sure, also, when also stares at the eggs, there's even music, uh, egg pad, egg pack, egg backpack, meat eating, Mando in space, he says, I'm going to have to ask you to stay str- strapped in, uh, while, uh, while seated. Uh, there's some sort of, they have a communications issue since he doesn't speak frog. He says, do you speak Huddies? No. no. Do you speak Huddies? He says that in Huddies. No. She just blinks. Hala to, to, va, to Havaka. Hala to Havaka. wonder if they said that in Return of the Jedi. Probably they did. If Huddies is what the Huds speak, uh. Oh, so, oh, oh, then there's also egg music again as he gets close up on the eggs. I don't know what the mom's thinking not having the eggs with her. I guess she's thinking that Oso wouldn't eat them. 
Then the Mando sets autopilot and says, all right, I'm going to hit the rack. I got to set the nav. You should get some rest because it's going to be a long drive. Then he goes to check his bedroom, the rack. Oso's not in there. So the kid's not in bed. Then Oso's in, in having a little snack, uh, hard-boiled, uh, hard-boiled eggs. Also, the frog person brought hard-boiled eggs. But they seem to be for her, and he's just helping himself. He goes, those aren't for you, man. Oso burps. He says nap time. Then we fade to black. And, of course, anytime the, like, anytime the Mandalorian relaxes, then this alert goes off. Uh, so then he goes back. He sees the frog is asleep. And then it's the chips are next to him in X-Wings. Uh, like, just like the California Highway Patrol, he says, is there a problem, officer? New Republic rules, buddy. You're supposed to have your transponder on at all times. He goes, oh, this thing didn't have, like, this thing was retrofitted. Uh, it's very well written because he says, oh, okay, I'll get right on it uh, then. And then they say, one more thing, pen, send us a ping, which I guess must be the whole, like, where they download your whole computer. Or your like computer, like your code and your your personal code and your ship's code. But first, they we're going to let him off. He says, "Yeah, may the force be with you, also with you." Oh, boy, one more thing though. Send us a ping. There, there. Just one more thing. Oh yeah. Yeah, give us a ping. And Amanda says, oh, I don't think it, we're looking for Imperials. Obviously, he goes, "Well, I, yeah, I'll let you know if I see any, but that doesn't work on my ship." Uh, and he goes, it's not turned on. And they say, okay, we'll wait. Uh, and he goes, well, it's broken. And they say, oh, okay, well, we'll have to pull you over then, you know, to pay. but when we pull you over here, we got to drive way out of the way. And uh, they say, man, that's not good. I, I Delphi is where we'll have to go. Then we'll run your tabs. Uh, and he goes, oh, well, okay, here it is. Uh, there, that works. Uh, and the frog lady wakes up. Uh, Sorry about that noise. Not a frog lady. I don't know why you would cover that up, though. And then the, the, they say, let's talk privately, the two X-Wing officers. And then their X-Wings go to X-Wing mode. They were in flight mode. They go into pulling over with action mode. Uh, Mando takes off. They go, oh, boy, we got a runner. And a chase ensues. So, so we're like, what, 10 minutes into the episode or 14 minutes, and we already had two action. This is our second action sequence. They follow them, and they say, they, they, they go into a planet with a lot of clouds. Uh, Mando tries to hide in the clouds, uh, doesn't do that successfully. Well, he kind of barely does. Then he turns off the engines. They don't fly right by. He drops uh, so that he drops straight towards the earth or the planet. There's even the cool sound effects of, uh, you know, plummeting ship. They drop fast. A frog woman does not like it. They fly into an ice canyon. Not sure if this was one of the planets from one of the movies, uh, whatever, like, uh, but it's an ice planet. Or it's an icy planet. Uh, target computer active. They say, don't, these are very generous uh, patrollers. They say, don't make us, you know, take out your ship, man. Razor Crest. Then the Mando hide, actually successfully hides. Uh, you know, first he goes through a cave. Uh, then he slides across the ice and then manages to, like, turn off his engine and slide under a rock. And the X Wings do fly by. But they're like, uh, yeah, so they fly by. He drops through the ice. Uh, and then again, the screen goes to black again. Then we come back. Mando just wakes up. They had all fallen asleep. Uh, but his stuff is frosty. He's a little frozen. Really fun sequence, though, with uh, the Razor Crest sliding across the ice. Uh, and they give you a first, a quick second where you're like, oh, okay, things are going to be just fine here. Uh, but then it cracks and drops through, drops pretty far. They fall asleep, cut to black, cut back, Mando wakes up. So then he helps the frog mama, mama 
uh, wakes her up. He says, don't worry, I'll go look for your kids. Uh, don't worry at all. There's a hole in their hall. At some point, he says, we've lost all integrity. Uh, then he's looking around. I think he even says a D, D, D A double M, you know, d- d- darn, darn it all. Cause he can't find Oso or the eggs. Then he finds Oso, uh, under the blanket, eating the eggs, uh, hard boiled eggs. So don't worry. Unshelled. Doesn't give him consequences. So I don't want to pay, you know, teach you. I mean, he's more of like a caretaker. What do you call that? A caretaker than, um. Uh, then what do you call it? But, uh, you say, what do you, like, uh, you got to give him consequences, man. Oh, so slurps down an egg. He does a slurp, then a burp. Uh, yeah, right now he's looking for him. Where's the frog blade? He's like, hurry up and find my eggs, dude. My hard boiled eggs and my spawn to get, are together. Cause they need hard boiled eggs to feed, you know, it helps, uh, like I brought those for my husband, you know, it helps it's aphrodisiac where we're from, uh, a lot of comedy with Oso and the hard boiled eggs. The mom, he says, don't worry, got your kids. Uh, Oso slurps and burps. He says, what are you doing, man? Those are aphrodisiac for frogs, not for Yodish beings. Then Mando says to the frog, like, they starting to sn- eat some, a meal. He says, main power drives out, temperature's going to drop, Hall's integrity's messed up, plan's off. He goes, I'll give you an idea of what's going to happen later, but you're not going to like it. I'm gonna, by the way, I'm going to take a nap. Uh, the frog lady, she says, uh, look at this battery level on my, kid, my spawn. I'm low on aphrodisiacs, and my spawn have to get, be kept at a certain temperature. And Mandalorian says, let's talk about it later. And she groans, but then she, you know, nothing is what it seems in these ones. Uh, Oso's trying to get closer to the eggs. He snuggles up with uh, Beskar armor, or Beskar steel. She snuggles up with her kids. But she's still trying to brainstorm a solution. There is a small heater. And she looks up at that droid head uh, from the droid the Mando had taken out. And she blinks her eyes. She's thinking. Then she wakes the Mandalorian up with the frog head. She's using it to uh, interpret for her. This can't wait till morning. I bypass the security protocols. I got his vocabulator. So, like, these are my... Sp- he goes, what are you doing? That's a dangerous droid. She goes, it's only its head, one. Two, these are my last brood. My husband worked, you know, we're car- trying to carve out an existence for us. Uh, I'm the only planet hospital to our species. And we've gone through too much to deal with this. Uh, this is our family line. So I demand you hold true to your bargain. Oh, so whimpers. Uh, Mando says, the lady, the deal's off. Uh, and she gets him right where he gets, you know, he, he says, okay, well, I thought there was something called the Mandalorian Code. Uh, maybe you don't believe in it. Uh, maybe that's just for kids. Um, hmm. Also, too bad you won't find any Mandalorians then. He looks at Yoda, who looks at him. He goes, oh, brother. Moves Yoda, gets grouchy, gets up. Uh, Grabs his toolbox and says, I guess I got to get to work. This wasn't part of the deal, though. And this little wreckage looks, I don't know how he fixes it, because there's like sparking stuff, smoking stuff, goop, stuff shooting goop, green goop out, bright green goop. We get some surf guitar music. There's still sunlight coming through the hole that they fell through. And Mandalorian kind of starts to work on some of the ship. Uh, and he says, oh, boy, we don't got much sunlight left. He kind of does one of those looks. So either he was asleep the whole night or he was only asleep for a little while. I think, again, he keeps getting worried about when night falls, though. But he starts to work on the ship. We pan, The camera pans up to give us a little break. It fades to white when we see him working. Then Oso's talking to him and pointing, actually tattletaling. Oso says, why don't you do something, kid? And uh, Oso marches off. He goes, hey, why didn't I learn to give you consequences? 
where are you going? I said, get back here. Very grouchy, kid. Get back here. Then he sees Oso kind of staring off. Uh, looks just like Yoda at, the, at that moment. Not a Yodish being. Yoda, the character. And we see the steps of the frog mom. And then we see him in uh, thermal imaging. And he picks up Oso. And he walks through an ice cave. Very beautiful. Blue, blue ice cave. Very nice with the sunlight. And he starts to go through the cave. Uh, it's very, like, uh, he's looking around. He's always suspicious. He looks pretty cool, iced in. Oso's looking around, being held. He's doing the football butt carry of baby Oso. Following the mom's steps. Uh, wondering, you know, WTF. Uh, keeps checking the thermal imaging. And then eventually he sees, like, there's some red light coming through. He says, okay, more thermal stuff up there. Goes into a larger cave, uh, and it's like a hot spring. I mean, first he has to take a couple turns, takes a left turn there, scoots through. Then he's in the hot spring, and the frog lady's in the hot spring in her frog birthday suit with her uh, spawn. And there's a lot of icicles. He says, what are you doing out here? You can't be outside the ship. We don't know what's out here. She says, I got to keep my frog, you know, everything like uh, warm. Oso sees the warm, warm hard-boiled eggs too. He says, wait a second. And uh, Mandalorian says, it's going to be nighttime soon. And I can't, you know, I can't work on the ship. And she says, but it's nice and warm in here. He says, let's get these spawn and hard-boiled eggs cleaned up. Uh, He sees Oso reaching for a hard-boiled egg. He goes, no, no. He winks his finger at him. Oso does not really listen. Then he does. So then he wanders off. uh, uh, Hot spring with eggs. Gather these up. Bobbing bobbing for frog eggs. No, no. Oso walks off. He's sniffing something. And then he sees these... uh, these like thumb shaped thing, ice thumb shaped things. He goes up to one. They are also eggs, of course, uh, but a different kind or uh, spores or something. He sniffs one, then he taps it. It's hollow. Then he scratches the top of it. His ears move. He rips it open. It's paper like. Uh, and inside is a fern friend, uh, in a, like a half fern. Is that what they're called? Not fr- ferns are a spore-based plant, right? Maybe. And he snacks on the fern. Well, he doesn't know these are sentient fern-based be- fern beings. Not, fern, not a fern-based being. I guess they're fern-based beings. And he's surrounded by these spores with baby fern, with sentient ferns in there. And all of them start to come out of their shell. Uh, it's very cool music. Really, really good music. Uh, and uh, he's so he snacks on this thing, uh, and all the fern babies say, "What in the heck?" Uh, and he says, "I don't like these ferns." They start going towards him, and they say, "Are you a fern?" Huh? What a fer- what a fern? What are we? Is they're just kids, so they don't know. Huh? But then they start making this sound to call the older sentient ferns. Uh, the frog mom, she grabs her cloak with her tongue to get dressed. She gets dressed really fast, really efficient at getting dressed. And this was very D&D type moments. Oso cries, runs to his papa. Oh, dear. Lots of new fern friends show up of various sizes. And you know if there's fern children around in an episode about parenthood, uh, there, there's like teens, uh, teen ferns. And then the mom fern comes, and there was a show called Between Two Ferns, and I don't know, this must be the way the ferns are in Star Wars, because they say, we're going to have to surround you and keep you as part of our fern family. We just want to snuggle you. But when you get snuggled by ferns, the thing is that uh, it's cold. The ferns don't realize that you're these are uh, well two warm-blooded characters, and then I'm not sure about the frog. So there's various sizes. He says, go, run. At some point, like, my notes are going to change here, but she goes into frog mode. The chase is very D&D. 
The ferns have legs, so they can run very fast, so they're chasing them. Uh, also, the far, ferns can shoot shoot this far, fern, sticky fern stuff, uh, fern goop. Uh, but so now I did it, um, like, uh, this will be, what, how many stages is this? Okay, this looks like a 60-stage plan to deal with uh, fern fer, fern trouble. And so you don't get caught up in a fern, you know, web of ferns, I would say. The old web of ferns uh, was another Star Wars, Star Wars Episode 20, Web of Ferns. Okay, so if you do, so here's how you start out. How do you also create fern trouble for an action sequence? One, open a fern spore and eat it. Two, tell your dad. Three, get picked up. Some of this is from Oso's perspective. Four, run, moan also. Uh, five, if you're the Mandalorian, draw, draw your anti, you have an anti fern sprayer. Draw your anti fern sprayer and watch. One, spray, one spray maybe. Uh, seven, dodge a fern web. Uh, eight, pull up your coat. Uh, if you're a frog, oh, if you, before you go in frog mode, pull up your cloak or your coat. Uh, nine, enter frog mode. 10, dodge the leg of the giant frog mother. I mean, firm mother, excuse me, frog woman. Uh, 11, run really, keep running, run really, but run really, 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 really fast. Uh, 12, use your, uh, magnetic detonators if you're the Man- Mandalorian, because that, like, uh, hopefully that'll cause a cave in and it'll stop the ferns and stop the fern mother. And ideally, if you stop the fern mother, you'll stop everything. Uh, so surround the fern mother with, use three detonators, turn them on so the LEDs go on, throw them. I guess they stick to snow, too. You know, explode them, cause a cave-in. Hopefully the fern mother went bye-bye. Um, that's step 12. Step 13, watch to see if it worked. Uh, 14, it didn't stop the fern family from chasing you, so run. 15, spray a lot of your fern, anti-fern spray. 16, use your uh, fire thingamajig, your your flamethrowing wrist thing. I don't know where it keeps, I mean, I, I guess like I'm like, man, Mandalorian has to give a lot of fuel where they can really compress the fuel. Uh, 17, uh, spray, one, two, this is probably incorrect though, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 times, maybe. 18, get gooped by a fern goop, but also catch a baby fern. 19, spray 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times around. 20, get inside the hull of your ship. There's a blanket blocking the way. Spray one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six or seven times. Twenty-one. La- go up the ladder. Uh, spray one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times or, or so. Uh, Twenty-one. Close the door. Uh, spray, but then the uh, bunch of ferns try to keep you from closing the door. Spray one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven times or so. Uh, if you're oh so, uh, oh, a baby uh, ferns on your head, get saved by the frog mom who brushes it away kindly. Uh, step 20, one, two, three, 24. Use more of your flamethrower to get clear the door. Step 25, close the door. Step 26 or so, because my numbers are off. Watch and listen. Uh, next step, uh, try to start the ship. Uh, this better work. Uh, yeah, g- get some ride uh, flying music going. Step 29, 
to 27, 28, or 29. Take off uh, a little bit. Uh, step, next step, I'll start at step 30 again because my numbers are off. Uh, mom or dad lands on your ship, the uh, for giant fern. It causes your ship to go back down to the ground. Uh, then the mom will try to break your windows. Uh, uh, step 30, do a close-up of the mother or father trying to get on your ship and gasp. Uh, step 31, saved by mysterious bla- blasts of anti-fern ray. By whom? Step 32, better find out, but they have spotlights so we can't see them. Uh, step 33, hold on to your eggs, Mom, because Oso's nearby. Step 34, go walk through your ship. Oh, boy, it's going to be need to clean because it's full of fern droppings. Can't believe sentient ferns go to the bathroom. Uh, step 35, the whoever the mysterious characters are, clean off your ship of more ferns with their anti-fern rays. Uh, step 36, realize that it was the X-Wing cops that pulled you, ships that pulled you over. We ran your tabs, uh, they say. You were supposed to be busted for rescuing prisoner X6, uh, hold on, X6 something. Um, yeah, we'll come back to it because uh, it hit the wrong button too. So now they're cleaning off. Also, the slime is also, this is season two, season of slime. Or chapters nine and ten, the slimy episodes. Uh, so, yeah, we ran your tabs. You were supposed to be busted for uh, rescuing or escaping X6911. But uh, the, the camera said that you also busted uh, three priority culprits from the wanted register. And you helped uh, protect or tried to protect uh, Lieutenant Davin. Uh, is this true? And my bus did the Mandalorian says technically you should be, but these are trying times. Uh, and the Mandalorian says, okay, what if, what if I have four go? Well, okay, let's get back to the steps, right? Uh, is this true? Trying times. Can you help me uh, seal up my ship? No. Uh, why don't you just uh, fix the transponder, bro? You're lucky we, that's all we did was... Uh, uh, we're just going to, you know, we won't even give you a ticket, but we're not going to help sit around if we saved your rear end, by the way. You never even said thank you. So, bye. 40, step 40, watch them leave. Step 41, that's a big bummer. I'm going to have to get back to work uh, and fix some stuff to stabilize the ship. And hope we wiped out. Unfortunately, while we tried to save one frog spawn, we what may have wiped out an entire spawn of fern-based beings. Maybe the not sure if that's any irony. So uh, step forty-two, we're gonna have to get cozy in the cockpit uh, because I'm not gonna be able to fix the hull. Step forty-three, use the privy. Take your turns. Don't leave Oso alone with the eggs after midnight. Step 44, fix the stuff while the kid watches you with love uh, and amazement and thoughtfulness. Step 44B, use a privy again. Step 45, don't eat the eggs, kid. Uh, Step 46, take off... uh, while the ship shakes a lot and we defern it, uh, uh, step, uh, 47, wake me up before you go, go. Cause I'm not planning on a going solo, uh, sweet dreams. Oh, step 48, only 48 step plan. Don't eat the eggs, but keep an egg hidden in your pocket for later. Ha ha. Okay, and then the episode ends with, uh, um, that was like the end of the episode after Oso sneaks an egg when everyone's sleeping that he had in his pocket. Okay, so then the episode ends with the title, the uh, kind of, I don't think they're storyboards because they're too artistic and beautiful. 
I mean, not that storyboards aren't. The storyboards are just usually a little bit faster put together. So maybe these were like concept art. I don't know. Probably that's what they are. Uh, so one is the fern based beings. Two is the X Wing chase. Three is the hot tub. Four is the Sedaris card game. Five is the frog on the ship. Uh, six is a crash in the snow with the X Wing flying by. Seven is running away from the um uh, the 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 spy the, the seven is run away from the fern based beings. Let's see, and actually they, they even add some like motion while spraying the the fern based beings and the frog woman running. Uh, eight is like surrounded by fern based beings at your ship. Uh, nine is in the cockpit while the firm base being surround your ship. Uh, and uh, 10 is being saved by the, uh, the X wings. All right. So we got time for a couple facts here. Uh, um, so sector is one thing that came up this episode. So we went over to star Wars fandom dot fandom dot com. And according to this, uh, sector is an area of space framed by an artificial boundary for political, economic, or military organization. Uh, Groupings of inhabited systems organize themselves into informal sectors before the infinite empire. Uh, The Galactic Republic was the first body to try to make standardized sectors, a maximum of 50 star systems that are inhabited. Uh, after rapid uh, exploration, uh, caused many s- sectors to grow larger than their size. Uh, then some even got up to a thousand inhabited systems. Uh, that's 125 inhabited systems per sector. At some point, they, they tried. To, there was too many sectors, so there was something called the uh, Re- Russian Reform Reformation in uh, 1000 BY what BBY. It reorganized the galaxy into 1,024 sectors and even subsectors. But that was problematic because uh, uh, some had, uh, you know, a little bit of worlds and bar- somewhere like barren stars. Uh, Chancellor Palpatine reversed the moratorium on new sectors and created new sectors by dividing up larger ones. Uh, by Republic law in a state of emergency, an appointed governor could coordinate military action with a senator of a troubled sector. This is what Palpatine explo- exploited during the Cologne Wars. Uh, then uh, when the Empire took over, MOFFS, M-O-F-F-S, like, uh, replaced senators as sec- sec- governors of sectors. And uh, sectors were expanded or collapsed together uh, by the MOFs uh, under Palpatine and delegated by Palpatine. Unincorporated territories wishing to be part of the empire became new subsectors or were added. Uh, yeah, some were based on the primary planet, like Alderaan became the Alderaan system and then the Alderaan sector. Uh, sector maps, there's maps of the sectors, the outer rim, the mid rim, and the expansion region. Let's see, I don't know if that's in legends. I don't know what canon means. Uh, in canon, a sector is a space of land uh, framed by artificial boundary that contains solar systems. It's just not as expansive as uh, the canon, just as uh, it's basic. All right, I want to look up jetpacks here in Star Wars fandom while I'm here. Jetpacks are aerial transportation. Mandalorian armor was equipped with jetpacks. Some clone troopers uh, had jetpacks. Uh, Galactic Empire had jump troopers, First Order jet troopers, uh, Sith Eternals jet trooper, clone jetpack trooper. Known models include the uh, J12, JT12, the Z6, and the rocket packs. Um, let's see, that's in canon. Let's see what legend has. Uh, I just want to see what we know about, uh, fuel and stuff. Uh, they were worn on the back, wrist mounted, uh, control or verbal controls. 
A jetpack funneled air and fuel through miniaturized turbines, uh, which caused a thrust. Uh, you had to have some, you couldn't go very high, and you had to have some atmosphere to have thrust. Sometimes they created a cloud of exhaust or dust to, to help with getaways. Uh, directional exhaust now, noz, nozzles uh, helped control the flight path and had a gyro stabilizer. Uh, downsides to the jetpack's agility were the device's 30 kilo weight. So that answers one question for this episode. And uh, most models can only carry enough fuel for around 20 bursts of thrust. Uh, so that's another one. Often, often a repulsor pack was a more viable alternative. Uh, let's see. Um... Yeah, you could also use it, I guess, as a parachute. There's a little bit about that. Let's see what a repulsor pack is. A repulsor pack has repulsor lift technology. They're more efficient than jet packs, longer flight, uh, uh, but they only worked inside of a gravity well. None, I have no idea what any of that is. Uh, a repulsor, repulsor lift engine is a repulsor. Anti-gravity technology uh, capable of levitating an object. Uh, is created by forming subnuclear knots of space-time uh, by enormous m- unmanned power refineries encompassing black holes. Repulsor lifts were widely used, and uh, they were used on every vehicle, virtually every vehicle. Uh, repulsor lifts only worked in a gravity well, as the technology required mass to push against. Uh, so, like on an Alderaan, an anti-grav range was approximately six six planetary diameters. Uh, repulsor lifts use minimal power and reliable enough to be utilized con- continuously. Repulsor lifts could be uh, assembled in arrays, clusters, or veins studded with microcoils of gravitic knots. These units were mounted on a vehicle or spacecraft on the underside. I don't understand any of this. Uh, Repulsor lifts, speeder bikes, land speeders, air speeders, and starships uh, that operate in gravic well, gravity wells. Let's just figure out, what is a gravity well? I mean, does it have gravity well in here? Gravity well. Uh, gravity well is uh, any location where a gravity field existed. So that'd be any planet with gravity, right? I mean, there was also ships with gravity wells. Uh, I don't know. I mean, they they were at the limits of my understanding of anything, which is always a good place to be. Speeder bikes, uh, larger history. The five planets of the Corellian system possessed massive repulsors on their surface. They were so powerful they could destroy ships in space. and even stopped the firepower of Centerpoint Station, which created gravitational shifts strong enough to destroy stars. Uh, let's see. There's asteroid. There's even asteroid shepherds. I don't know. I, I guess it's a little bit beyond my uh, thing, but it's just a little bit about you know repulsor jetpacks, gravity wells, and of course. Uh, yeah, so I guess that's a, that's just a little bit. I mean, I think that's all we need to know. I was going to look up those jetpacks. Uh, let's see if I can find those links again. The JT-12. Uh, yeah, the JT-12 was a personal jetpack worn by clones. Also had a launcher, so that could be what... J- oh, yeah, well, both models were fango- f- fangoed by Django Fett. Uh, uh, he lost his JT-12... Uh, once upon a time. So that's one that was created by Mirsan Munitions. What was the other one? Z6. Let's see if it has a link for Z6 even. Jetpacks. I could have sworn notable usage. Z6 jetpack. Here we go. Oh, no. This one. Z6 was uh, produced by Minitrons. Oh, this was one worn by Mandalorians. Uh, Jango Fett also wore one of these, and Boba Fett. Uh, this one was, uh, Z6 could hold enough fuel for one minute of continuous operation. Maybe we should go back and see what the JT-12 had, if it could hold longer. 
let's see, the JT-12, uh, Misco, Genosis, uh, Mace Windu, somebody, modified version was used by Clone two, uh, uh, Troopers, uh, and uh, the the Z6, similar Z6, uh, the ha- fuel tank held enough fuel for one minute of continuous operation, 23 second blast, which could use you move you 100 meters horizontally or seven meters, 70 meters vertically. So not very far. So I don't know. That, that's interesting. So just a little facts. Uh, and uh, yeah, good night. I hope you're snuggled up like oh so against Beskar Steel. As you get your rest, good night. All right, I want to thank everybody who reviewed the podcast recently. Uh, Princess Rai, uh, just uh, uh, three stars, not really a comment, uh, just uh, some sort of character emoji. So I don't know what that is. Miss Pixel says, uh, how does this work? Uh, I don't know. But uh, I love it. I have a terrible time falling asleep. Uh, ridiculousness, laugh out loud. The drippiness of the voice has worked every time. So far, three times. I'm going to start it before I get in bed. So then when I'm tucked in, I've gotten to the good stuff. Uh, thank you enough for your, thank you so much for your silly magic. Uh, YOLO for life is says a sleeping staple. This podcast was the last ditch effort to fall asleep after sleepy time, tea, melatonin, warm bath. Nothing was working until I found this podcast. I hardly make a pass intro till I'm knocked out. Uh, and then I wake up feeling rested. Thanks. Thanks. YOLO for life. YOLO 5736. Uh, AH1 says, thank you. My hand hit the fridge and I had the urge to write a review. Uh, thanks for all you do to help others. I don't know how it works, but it does. I never made a pass intro. Uh, LAC says, uh, Z's, uh, the only thing that's had put me asleep in the past few weeks. Thank you. Uh, 423, that's, I guess that's different than 420, says life essential, there's something you always want on hand, uh, the sleep of me is one of those salves for nerves at the end of a long week, uh, helps me clear my head, fill my lungs, and let me sleep. Uh, Doppel Kitty, yeah, we may have read that one before, but I just like it, Doppel Kitty. It's a cat, uh, pretend to be a cat, uh, it's all great, love this podcast, uh, and uh, this is why I guess you're here to support, uh, li- like, uh, human rights, too, and that's important. Uh, so thanks. Uh, thanks, everybody, for reviewing the show. So even if you exist, a free podcast, could people support the show uh, or support the show directly on Patreon or support our sponsors, and then we grow with people just spreading the word naturally. So if you get a chance to do that, that's a free way to help the show. You don't have to share about sleep with me, just share about podcasts in general. And uh, that'll help the show, and I'll appreciate it. Uh, And so we'll be the person you teach about podcasts. So thanks. uh, Thanks so much, and good night.